Ever wondered why understanding your calorie intake matters when it comes to your weight? Well, calories are like fuel for our bodies, providing the energy we need to function. But, like fuel in a car, if we put in more than we burn off, it starts to accumulate. That's the same principle with our bodies. Excess calories can lead to weight gain. So it's clear that calories play a crucial role in our weight. But how do they actually work? Let's dig deeper. Everyone's calorie needs are different, and they depend on various factors. Let's break down these key factors. Firstly, we have the basal metabolic rate, or BMR. This is the number of calories your body needs to perform basic functions, like breathing and maintaining body temperature while at rest. Next up is your activity level. If you're a desk jockey, your calorie needs will differ vastly from an athlete training for a marathon. The more active you are, the more fuel your body needs to keep going. Lastly, your weight goals also play a crucial role. If you're looking to shed a few pounds, you'll want to consume fewer calories than your body burns. Conversely, if you're aiming to bulk up, you'll need a surplus of calories to facilitate muscle growth. To calculate your daily calorie needs, you'll need to factor in your BMR, activity level, and weight goals. Now that we know how to calculate daily calorie needs, let's understand how consuming excess calories can lead to weight gain. What happens when you consume more calories than your body needs? This is where we delve into the concept of calorie surplus. It's a simple yet critical equation. When you eat more than what your body can burn, the excess doesn't just disappear. It's stored for later use. Picture your body as a complex engine. It needs fuel to run, right? That fuel comes from the food we eat. When we provide it with just the right amount, it performs perfectly. But what happens when we overfill the tank? The surplus energy doesn't overflow, it gets stored. Your body is a master at resource management. It turns the extra energy into fat and tucks it away for a rainy day. That's how weight gain occurs. It's not about eating too much of one thing or another. It's about consuming more energy than your body can use. But how does this energy conversion process take place? Let's look at the digestion process. The digestion process begins the moment you take your first bite. As you munch on your meal, your teeth break their food down into smaller pieces. Enzymes in your saliva start the chemical digestion, breaking down starches into simpler sugars. The food then travels down the esophagus and into the stomach. In the stomach, the food is mixed with stomach acid and digestive enzymes. These powerful substances break down the food even further, turning it into semi-liquid mass known as chemi. Proteins start to unravel and are broken down into smaller molecules. Next, the chyme moves into the small intestine, where the real magic happens. Here, enzymes produced by the pancreas continue to break down proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. The lining of the small intestine is covered in tiny finger-like projections called villi, which increase the surface area for absorption. As the food gets broken down into its basic building blocks, it's ready to be absorbed. Proteins are broken down into amino acids, fats into fatty acids, and glycerol and carbohydrates into simple sugars. These nutrients are then absorbed through the walls of the small intestine and into the bloodstream. The absorbed nutrients are then transported to different parts of the body where they are used for energy, growth, and repair. Any undigested food like fibers that our bodies can't break down moves into their large intestine or colon. Here, water and electrolytes are absorbed and the rest is formed into stool to be excreted. The digestion process is a complex journey taking anywhere from 24 to 72 hours. It's a continuous cycle of breaking down and rebuilding, ensuring that every cell in our body gets the nutrients it needs to thrive. Digestion is more than just breaking down food. It's about extracting the maximum amount of nutrients from what we eat, and understanding this process can help us make more informed dietary choices. Now that we understand how food is broken down, let's delve into the digestion of carbohydrates and how it can lead to fat storage. Carbohydrates play a unique role in our bodies. They start their journey in our body the moment we consume food rich in carbs. As we chew and swallow, the digestive enzymes in our saliva start breaking down these complex carbs into simpler sugars. Once in the stomach, the process continues with more enzymes joining the party, further breaking down the carbs. The final destination? The small intestine. Here the carbohydrates are broken down into the simplest form of sugar, glucose. Glucose, my friends, is the main source of energy for our bodies. It fuels our brain, muscles, and other vital organs. So, what happens to this glucose? Well, 
It's absorbed into the bloodstream, causing our blood sugar levels to rise. In response, our pancreas releases insulin, a hormone that helps move glucose from our blood into our cells where it can be used for energy. But here's the catch. Our body is a smart machine. It understands that it may need energy later when food might not be available. So it stores some of this glucose in the form of glycogen in the liver and muscles. Think of glycogen as our body's backup energy source. However, there's a limit to how much glycogen our body can store. When these stores are full and there's still excess glucose, our body doesn't let it go to waste. It converts the excess glucose into fat and stores it in fat cells throughout our body. This process is known as de novo lipogenesis. Now fat is a more concentrated source of energy than glycogen. So when our body needs energy and there's no glucose or glycogen available, it turns to these fat stores. But remember, if we continue to consume more calories, specifically carbs, than we burn off, the excess glucose continues to be converted into fat, and we may gain weight. Understanding the journey of calories in our bodies is key to managing our weight effectively. Let's recap what we've learned. Today, we've taken a deep dive into the world of calories. We've explored the significance of comprehending your calorie intake and how it influences your weight. It's not just about counting calories. It's about understanding what those numbers mean for your body. We started with the calorie conundrum, highlighting the importance of understanding our daily calorie needs. We've learned that these needs are dictated by multiple factors, including our basal metabolic rate, activity levels, and personal goals. Then, we navigated through the weight gain process. We've realized that surplus calories don't just disappear, they transform into weight gain as excess energy is stored as fat. Our journey continued into the fascinating world of digestion. We've seen how food, once ingested, breaks down into essential nutrients like carbs, proteins, and fats. It's a complex process, but it's essential to our survival and well-being. The story of carbohydrates was our next stop. We've discussed how carbs break down into glucose, which our bodies use for energy. Any excess glucose can convert into fat for storage, illustrating the direct link between our food choices and our body's fat storage. In conclusion, understanding how our bodies process and store energy from food is crucial for managing our weight effectively. It's not just about eating less, it's about eating smarter. Remember, understanding your calorie intake and how it impacts your weight is the first step towards a healthier you.